Blessings, my brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining me once again on another session of Measured Faith Bible Study. Uh, I didn't realize we were live that quick. Amen. We got caught up talking, but I thank you all for joining us on this Tuesday evening, afternoon, depending on where you are viewing from. I ask that you share this video now with some of your friends. We are going to go deep tonight, but we are not going to be on here long. Most of you know um, who watch um, 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 softball or who watch me on my social media. You know, I'm a big time Sooner fan. So my girls is playing in the World Series tonight. So we are going to have Bible study, Sister Pamela Johnson. But I'm going to get off here and watch me some softball. Do not judge me because I'm going to do it. Amen. But I wanted to jump on here and dive into the word of God for a few minutes. Amen. So we're not going to be on here long, but we are going to get um, a word from God tonight and get some good teaching tonight and some good meat. Amen. So if you're ready to eat, somebody put in the comments. Let's go. Amen. Let's pray right quick. Father God, we come before you this hour with an attitude of gratitude, just thanking you for blessing us to see another beautiful blessed day. As always, Father God, we acknowledge you in all of our ways. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor. We acknowledge you, Father God, as our, the head of our life, as our heavenly father, as our wealth of resources. And now that we've gathered here today, we ask and pray once again that you would open the eyes of our understanding, Father God. Help us to see more deeply, more clearly with the uh, divine understanding and revelation of your word, Father God. Give us near to hear, a heart to receive, and a will to obey, Father God. Get out of me everything that you place within me and perfect that thing which concerns each one of us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, we are going to continue on in the book of Romans. We will be in Romans, the seventh chapter. Today, Paul is talking about, amen, sin and, 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 and the law and how the law was actually done away with in Christ Jesus. Amen. How the law is not a bad thing, but the law was there as we talked about um, Sister Gaines. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me, Sister Lois. Um, the law was there as a compass. It was there to give us direction. It was there to give us structure. It was there to show us what sin was, Brother Keith. Amen. But Jesus Christ came not to do away with the law, but he came to fulfill the law. So when he died, the law died with him. Amen. And when we are baptized, we talked about last week. Amen. We are baptized with Christ Jesus. When we are baptized with Christ Jesus, our old man has passed away. The law has passed away with that. And just as Christ Jesus had rose from the dead, you and I rise in him. New creatures. And now we are able able, hear me here, to fulfill the law that is in Christ Jesus by obeying the commands of the law. Amen. I, I, I mean, by obeying the followings and the commands of Jesus Christ, understanding that the commands of God were given to us, hear me here, for structure, for guidance, and to make us aware of what sin was. Remember, when we first started this teaching, we began to use the... Um, the speed sign analogy, amen? The speed sign is there to show us how fast we are able to go in a certain uh, um, uh, um, zone or in a certain town or down a certain street, amen? Because we all can go different speeds, but that speed sign is there to inform us the laws and the structure of that road that we are riding down. And we are to obey that speed sign, amen? Because it's there to guide us. It's there to keep us in accordance with what has been um, 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 commissioned by the laws of that town or of that state. And that's what the law was, amen? But we must understand that whenever Christ Jesus came, it is important that we understand this. When Christ Jesus came, he fulfilled the law. And because we are children of God, we too now are not under law, but remember we talked about it, we are under grace. We are under the grace of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, amen? And so it is imperative that we understand scripture in an accurate um, um, way so that we will be able to apply it to our lives. I read a, a quote today by Dr. Darius Daniels. I signed up for one of his classes and he made a quote about um, accurately understanding the Bible. And he said, and I quote, you can only rise to the level of your biblical 
interpretation. That is very profound. I'm going to say that again. Dr. Darius Daniel says that you can only rise to the level of your biblical interpretation. How you interpret the Bible is how far you rise, how far you soar, how far you go in life, how successful you are in life. And so therefore, we want to make sure, my brothers and sisters, that we have an accurate understanding, that we have sound doctrine, and that we're not taking the word of God and making it to fit our lives, to make us feel good or compliment us in our situations, amen, that's out of the context that God would have for us, amen. So we want to make sure that we are applying the word of God here, amen. And so as we look at this, we look and see that Paul, when he begins to talk to the Romans, he uses the law and marriage as, 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 as an illustration for us to abide by. Hey, Sister Sandra, good to see you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. And so he says in um, uh, Romans 71, I'm going to begin to read. He says, do you not know, brothers and sisters, that I am speaking to those who know the law, that those that the law is binding only to a person during that person's lifetime? Thus, a married woman is bound by the law to her husband as long as she lives. But if the husband dies, she is dis discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. In the same way, my friends, you have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may no longer belong to another, but to him who has been raised from the dead in order that we may bear good fruit. While we were living in the flesh, our simple passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear the fruit of death. But now we are discharged from the law. Why? Because Christ Jesus came dead to that which held us captive so that we are not slaves under the old written code, but of the new life of the spirit. I'm going to head, go ahead on and continue to read in verse seven. In verse seven, he starts to talk about the law and sin. So, well, let me stop right there and just interpret that because I just said that we can never rise above the level of our interpretation. So what Paul does here is Paul uses the illustration of marriage between a man and a woman. And he says that long as a woman, when she is married to a man or a man is married to a woman, as long as that man lives, that woman is bound to that man. As long as that man lives, he is bound to that woman. If they so choose to divorce, if they so choose to leave each other for any other reason other than adultery, the Bible says, you are committing adultery. Why? Because your husband is still alive. But it says, if, however, your husband or your spouse or your wife, rather, your spouse dies, you are no longer under or obligated uh, um, to uphold the statues and, and, and the values of that marriage. Amen. Why? Because that person has passed on. So Paul says, just like um, the marriage analogy, whenever Christ came, that marriage that you had to the law now died. Hear me here. Be, and now we are married. We have now become the bridesmaid or the bride, yeah, yeah the um, bridesmaid of of Christ Jesus. We are now married to Christ Jesus. So he goes on to talk about this and he says in verse seven, he says, what shall we say then? The law is sin? He says, no, by no means. The law is not sin. Yet, if it had not been for the law, we would have not known what sin was. Remember, we talked about that. The law points us to sin. It's not sin itself, but it shows us what murder is. It shows us what lying is. It shows us what covetousness is. It shows us what cheating is. It shows us what uh, pride is. It shows us what sin is. He says, I would have not known what covet was if the law had not said, thou should not covet. But sin sees an opportunity to this command producing me all kinds of covetousness. He said, because I knew what covenant was from the law, he said, now the sin on the inside of me produced all kinds of desires to covet things. He goes on to say, apart from the law, sin is dead. 
I once was alive apart from the law, but when the commandments came, talking about the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses, sin was revealed and I died and the very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. He says, so the commandments that God gave Moses to give unto me, they were supposed to produce life. He said, but they brought about death to me why? Because I was failing in upholding those commandments. He said, for sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandments, because the sin seized the opportunity to deceive us, and it killed us through the law. He says, so the law is not sinful, but it is holy, and the commandment is holy and good. He said, did, did what is good then bring death to me? He said, no, the law did not bring death to me. It was the sin that was working through the law, which was good, that brought death to us. And so he goes on and he says, I see covetousness and I see that, the, I, that, that I am one who covets. I see, I, I see that the law says, um, 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 do not, um, a murder, yet there's murder. The law says do not lie, yet there's pe people who lie. The law says do not um, 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 bear false witness, yet there's people who bear false witness. He says, so the very thing that was supposed to bring me life actually brings me death. Why? Because I am not abiding by it. But Christ Jesus came, hear me here, so that we could uh, 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 um, die to the law and through his grace, hear me here, the law will be fulfilled. Remember that word justification we talked about a few weeks ago? And now we are justified, hear me here, in spite of our wrongful, sinful nature that we have through the blood, the atonement, and the propitiation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what I like about it now is that Paul begins to start to talk about this inner conflict that happens on the inside of him. He says, although I am a son of God, although I wrote to you and told you that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This is the Paul I'm talking about. The Paul that told the Romans that all things work together for our good. I'm talking about the Paul who said greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The same Paul who wrote one third of the New Testament, 13 books of the Bible. The same Paul, mom, who said, um, I am, uh, um, 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 that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask to think. I'm talking about the Paul in the Bible who says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. I'm talking about the Paul who said he was born a Hebrew of Hebrews, that he was circumcised on the eighth day, that he was of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm talking about the same Paul who said that he knew the law inside out. I'm talking about the same Paul who sat with scholars and scribes and, 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 and argued the Bible and debated the Bible. This same Paul, get me here, when he looks at the law and he looks at himself and he looks at sin that's going on now, he looks at it, Sharon, and he says, there's an inner conflict that's going on on the inside of me. Look what he says in verse 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual. He says, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. He says, I do not understand my own action. <laughs> Paul said, for I do not do what I want to do, but I do everything that I hate. Now, if I do not do what I want to do, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh, Paul says. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. Paul says, I know to do what's right. I have the will to do what's right. I want to do what's right. He said, but I can't do it. He says, for I, for I do not do the good that I want to do, but the evil that I do, but the evil that I do not want to do, this is what I do. He says, so now if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I that does it, but the sin that dwells within me. Hold up, Dyke. Wait a minute. Slow down. Rewind the tape. 
interpretate that for me because you told me from the beginning that Dr. Darius Daniel said that you can only rise to the level of your biblical interpretation. So let's make sure that we have an accurate understanding of what Paul is saying right here. Paul says, I don't understand my own actions. Verse 15, Paul said, I don't even understand myself, y'all. He says, there's an inner conflict that's going on on the inside of me. He says, for what I don't want to do, I find myself doing the very thing that I don't want to do. He says, I want to be holy, but there's still some hood on the inside of me. Come on, y'all have seen them t-shirts that says holy in hood. That mean pray with me, don't play with me. Paul says, I'm holy, but there's still some hood on the inside of me, sister Demetrius. He says, I'm callous, but at the same time, I'm kind. He says, I, 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 I don't care, but then at the same time, I do care. Paul says, there's some stuff going on the inside of me that I don't even understand that time. There's an inner conflict that uh, on the inside of me. I know I should keep my mouth shut, but man, sometimes I just got to say what I got to say. I know I shouldn't look at it, but sometimes I flip the page. Sometimes I turn the chapter. Sometimes I click on the website anyway. There's an inner conflict. There's a struggle that's going on the, on the inside of Paul. Hear me here. I told you this is the Paul who said I can do all things through Christ Jesus. This is the same Paul who said he was born of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrew, circumcised on the earth uh, on the eighth day, knew Hebrew, Greek, and every other language you could possibly think of. The same Paul, Sister Miller, who woke, who, who wrote. Uh, um, 13 books of the New Testament. He pauses and he gives, hear me here, a transparent testimony and he tells us, I've got some stuff going on the inside of me that I don't understand. He says, when I want to do good, evil is always present. This is what it says in the Message Bible. I like the Message Bible. The Message Bible, Paul says, what I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another way, doing the absolute things that I despise. Paul said, I don't, I don't even understand myself, y'all. He says, there's this spiritual war that's going on the inside of me when I know I ought to do right, I find myself giving in to the things that I don't want to do. But what shocks me is the fact that Paul gives this transparent testimony. You know, some people say that test that a uh, 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 transparency or testifying is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. Because some people, a lot of people, even Christians, if you would, have the propensity to want to judge people when they are transparent and tell their struggles. But remember, we learned in chapter one, in chapter two, that somewhere on the list, our names are on there. Somewhere on that list, your name is on there. This is why I hate when people want to judge other people. If you want to get under my skin, start talking about or judging other people. Because the whole time you judging somebody else and pointing out somebody else's flaws, I'm looking at you thinking, who are you to judge somebody else? I'm not saying we shouldn't hold people accountable. But when you get to judging people, you forget where God has brought you from, Sister Gonzalez. And here it is, Paul, a man who wrote one third of the New Testament says, there's an inner conflict going on with me. Can I testify? Can I be honest? There are some things that I don't want to do. I find myself doing. But I like the language that he uses here because he uses a very profound, prolific, powerful word. Paul said, the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He said, I don't understand my own actions. He said, for I do not do what I want to do. He said, but I do the very thing that I hate doing. That's what it says in verse 15. Paul says, I hate to do some of the things that I do. And that word hate right there, it's not. Paul saying that he's a, 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 a malice or that, that or, or, or that he's malicious toward people, that he's hateful toward people, Sister Ladinia. He's not talking about that type of stuff. He said, I hate 
some of the stuff that I do. In other words, Paul says that there is a discontentment on the inside of me. There is something that is dissatisfying when I do what I know I should not be doing. I want to be holy, but I'm acting hood sometimes. I want to be faithful, but sometimes I'm not loyal. I want to tell the truth, but oftentimes I find myself lying about stuff. I don't want to look at it, but oftentimes I click on it sometimes. Paul says, and I hate when I do this. Can I be honest with you? Not only is transparency a part of spiritual growth, hear me here, when you hate something, that you do, that means that you are growing spiritually. See, I often tell people, the only way that you can stop living the type of life that you're living in sin is that you have to be tired. Hear me here. You have to get to a point to where you hate what you are doing. You hate how it makes you feel. You hate looking at it. You hate arguing. You hate opening up your mouth. Every time you do it, it makes you feel bad. Paul says, I do it, but I hate to do it. So he says, that I'm, 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 it, it, it's not like I like to do it. He says, I'm just struggling with it. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, don't you ever let somebody make you feel that because you are struggling, you are not a Christian. Don't ever let someone make you feel because you struggle with something that you are not a child of God. Paul said, I'm struggling. I'm doing some stuff I don't want to do. I'm acting in some ways I don't want to act. I'm saying some stuff I don't want to say. He says, but get me here, follow me here. He says, there's an inner conflict that's going on on the inside of me. He says, there's a struggle that's going on. He said, for the things that I want to do, I do not do. He said, for no good thing dwells on the inside of me in my flesh. He says, I can will to do what's right, he said, but I cannot sometimes do it. Hear me here. Watch this. Watch what Paul does. Paul says, for I do not do the good I want to do. But the evil I do not want to do is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I, but the sin that dwells in me. My God. Look what Paul does. Paul does something that a lot of people, not only uh, of Christians, especially Christians, but a lot of people have a problem doing. Paul takes personal accountability for his actions. I said Paul takes accountability for his actions. And he says the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He says so it, 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 the evil that I don't want to do I find myself doing. So Paul says that there is a struggle that's going on on the inside of me. Can I stop right here and tell you that one of the worst things that we cannot, one of the worst things that we can avoid is accountability. We have to stop ducking accountability. You can never get to where God wants you to be. Hear me here, mama, if, if, if we are not going to accept accountability and responsibility. If we are not going to accept responsibility and take accountability for my actions and say, you know what? Sometimes it's me. Hear me here. Paul didn't blame it on the devil. He didn't say that the devil made me do it, Sister Demetri. He said, for the things that I want to do, I do not do. The things that I don't want to do, I do. So if I do the things that I don't want to do, he said, there's no more I can do. He, he, he says, there's something on the inside of me. Ah, there's some impulses on the inside of me, Paul says, that I often give into. And I hate to give into these impulses. But I find myself giving into the very thing that I don't want to do. So Paul said, hear me here. What reason why we have to be careful with judging people is simply because you don't get to choose your struggles. Woo. 
you get to choose if you succumb to your struggles, but you don't get to choose your struggles. Let me, let me, let me, let me make that clear for you. Some people are just gifted. Some of us just have natural gifts, natural talents. It's nothing that you do. You were born with the gift. You were born with the talent. Hear me here. Now you can continue to build up on those. You can continue to get better at those. But there are some things you were just born to do. Some people were just born pretty. You don't have to put on makeup. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to put long hair. You don't have to do nothing. You were born pretty. Whether you put makeup on, whether you put hair in your head, whether you go buy designer gowns, whether you go buy three-piece suits, you were just born beautiful. You were born handsome. Now, you can add to that. You can put some makeup on. You can put on some fitted clothes. You can go get a tailor suit to add to your good looks. But you were already born that way with good looks. You were already born to sing. You came out your mama's womb singing. You've been singing since the age of three and four. It's a gift. It's a talent. You were born with that. Now, yes, you can continue to mature that. You can continue to work on that and craft your gifts. But some things you were just born with, some strengths you were just born with. Hear me here. Not only were there some strengths you were born with, there were also some weaknesses that you were born with. Just as you were born with strengths, you're also born with some weaknesses. And your strength may not be my, may not be my strength, and, 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 and my weakness may not be your weakness. But the truth of the matter is, all of us have some weaknesses, and all of us have some strengths. Just as you have strengths, you have weaknesses. Just as I have weaknesses, I have strengths. So we got to be careful with judging people. Because here Paul says, right here, Paul says, there is a struggle. There's a weakness on the inside of me. I'm not blaming it on the devil. Satan ain't made me do nothing. This is me. This is something that's on the inside of me that I've been dealing with all of my life. I've been this way. And I hate it. I don't like being this way. But there's a struggle. On the inside of me, Paul says, sanctified, holy Paul, set apart Paul, Damascus Road Paul. Paul said that, that, that there's a struggle. There's some things that I struggle with. He says, and I hate that I struggle with this. But can I tell you something? You don't get to pick the things that you struggle with. They choose you. We all have something we struggle with. You don't get to pick and choose what you will and what, you, what, what you're going to struggle with, what you're not going to struggle with. It comes with who you are and how you are wired. But just because you don't get to choose what you struggle with, you do get to choose if you fall or give in to your struggle. That's the difference. Yes, I've got some struggles, but I have the power to choose whether I succumb to my sinful impulses. This is why Paul goes on to say, he says, he says, he says, after this holy discontent, this is, this is, this is what Paul says. Paul says, so I find that work thing. If I'm doing the things that I don't want to do, if there's an inner struggle on the inside, he, saw, he said, I found out something, Sister Demetra. When I want to do right, evil is always present. Every time I want to be holy, my hood side comes out. Every time I want to be callous, I mean, I want to be kind, callous shows up. Every time I don't want to care, every time I want to care, my my the 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 uh, side of me that that that, that doesn't want to care shows up. There's a battle, Sister Ladinia. 
that I'm struggling with. It doesn't make me unholy. It makes me human. It lets me know that I have impulses. That, 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 that I am human. That there is a fleshly side of me. There's a spiritual side of me. And I have to choose which way I'm going to walk. So what Paul deals with next, Paul says, I want to do evil. When I want to do good, evil is always present. He said, for I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. He said, but I see in my members, worry in my members, another law at work with the law of my mind. Hear me here, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members. He said, there's something on the inside of me that's fighting in my wanting to do right, that's fighting in my wanting to live right, that's fighting in my wanting to act right. And sometimes I give in to that. He said, but that doesn't mean that I'm not saved. He says, what it means is that I have to find, uh, uh, I, I have to strive rather for spiritual consistency. Paul says, so now I have to strive for consistency. He says, I get it. I know what I got to do. I have to strive to be consistent in being holy, to be consistent in living right, to be consistent in living faithful, to be consistent in telling the truth, to be consistent in being kind. I have to be consistent. I have to strive for consistency in keeping my mouth shut. I have to strive for consistency to keep a kind tempered uh, uh, temperament about myself. Paul says, because it's a struggle. And so I have to strive for consistency, Sister uh, May Tubby. Let me tell you something. People who walk around here like they got it, I'm not impressed at all. Because I know somewhere down in there, there's some inconsistency. There's a battle going on. I said, we're talking about Paul who said this. Paul said, let me testify. To all you holy rollers, I'm not saying that we shouldn't live God, Christ-like. I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, speak in tongues. I'm not saying that we shouldn't uh, 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 learn about. What I'm telling you is that you can never be too righteous. Don't you be so righteous that you can't admit that I struggle in some areas. Because if you can't admit that you struggle in some areas, you prevent yourself from growing spiritually. And hear me here. If you're not going to take accountability, and work on your own self. If you make an excuse, well, because it was, no, 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 no. Take accountability for your actions. Satan ain't made you do it. Ain't nobody else made you do it. You did it because of what's on the inside of you. Because of the struggle that's on the inside of you. And can I tell you something? It's okay to struggle. Stop letting people tell you that, it, that, that if you struggle, you're un, you ain't of God. It's okay to struggle. I would rather be a struggling Christian making progress than not be a, a, a Christian at all. Hear me here. Even the smallest snail and the slowest turtle eventually made it to Noah's Ark. I don't care how, how long it took them to get there. I don't care how difficult it was. I don't care how much of a struggle it was. The smallest snail and the slowest turtle eventually made it to Noah's Ark. The cheetah may have beat them there. The hyena, the giraffe may have beat them there. The rabbit may have gotten there. But they were on the Ark too. And it may have been a bigger struggle for them, but they were in the Ark. Just because you struggle, don't let nobody tell you that you are not a Christian. Get this. Paul says, oh, wretched man that I am. Paul says, I got some stuff going on about me. Oh, wretched man that I am. He, 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 he acknowledges his own struggles. And then he asks himself the question. He says, who is going to rescue me from this body of death? Who is going to rescue me? 
from the way that I'm living. He asks himself the question, and then he gives himself the answer. He says, thanks be to God through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the answer. Anytime you are struggling, my God, you have to say, thanks be to God that I should overcome this, that I should not give in to this. It's there. Paul had a thorn in his side. He asked God three times, man, take this thing away from me. I don't want this. Take this away from me, God. God said, no, 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 no. I need that to be there because you will always rely on me. Sometimes God lets us struggle in certain areas so we can look up and say, thanks be to you, Christ Jesus. This thing is not going to take me out. I don't know who this is for tonight, but you ought to like this. You ought to send this to somebody. You ought to inbox this to somebody. You ought to share this with somebody and let them know just because you're struggling does not mean you are not saved. The very fact that you hate the thing that you are wrestling with proves that God's hand is up on you. The very fact that you hate acting the way that you act and that you are convicted and that you're not okay with it and that you want to be better is a sign that you are not outside of God's will. You are not too far for his hand to pull you in and break the chains. But sometimes, hear me here, God will allow things to remain so that you can stay humble, so that you can continue to fight the good fight of faith. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May the Lord continue to perfect that which concerns you. I don't know who this is for. I pray it blessed you as much as it has blessed me. You all are a blessing to me. Thank you for logging on to another session of Measure Faith Bible Study. I will see you all next week. Keep me in your prayers. I will do the same for you. Father God, thank you for never turning your back on us. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for the struggle, Father God, because it is in the struggle that you reveal to us not only who we are, but who you are, not only what we can do, but what you call for us to do. We thank you, Father God, that the struggle will not take us out. We thank you that the struggle does not condemn us. We thank you that the struggle, Father God, does not um, turn you away from us, but that you, Father God, have called for us to embrace the struggle and to look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that you are going to work all things together for our good, because greater is you that is in us than he that 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 than, than he that is in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Father God, I, than he that is in the world. Excuse me. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. Now, as we leave this place forever from your presence, perfect that thing which concerns us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. May God bless you. May heaven smile up on you. And may the Lord continue to perfect that which concerns you. I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. God is in love with you. You got it. Walk in your victory. I'll see you all next week. I'm going to watch the softball game. Okay.